Here. Here. Vice Chairman Desmond. Here. Chairman Cox. Here. Um, before we get into the items on the agenda, we will have public communications, not agenda public communications. My understanding is we have two individuals that wish to address the board. One uh, by a, a statement that will be read by the clerk and one calling. So if the clerk would go ahead and deal with those at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you mentioned, we do have two non-agenda public comments this morning. For the individual that requested to call in, if you could please call in using the instructions that were provided to you. I'll begin with a comment that was submitted in writing. It reads, good morning, supervisors. Uh, th this comment is from Terry N. Skelly. It reads, good morning, supervisors. As a parent who attends the county's meth strike force meetings, I wanted to share with you information from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection press release on Monday. As you may know, the CBP seized more than 3,014 pounds of methamphetamine, 64 pounds of heroin, 29 pounds of fentanyl powder, and almost 37 pounds of fentanyl pills worth an estimated $7.2 million. This was part of the second largest methamphetamine bust along the southwest border in the history of the agency. The press release stated that the smugglers will try every way possible to try and get their product across the border. This massive seizure prevented over $7 million worth of deadly drugs from entering our country, thus saving countless lives from addiction and overdose deaths. Parents are concerned that meth use and opioid use is increasing again, and we wonder why. Our experience as parents suggests the indifference to high potency marijuana role in facilitating overall drug use contributes to the normalizing drug use in general. Parents respectfully thank the board for their ban of marijuana business, which only normalized pot use to the most vulnerable young people and generate billboards and other advertising that is enticing to youth. And uh, the individual that requested to call in, it doesn't appear that they have called in at this time. Uh, so Mr. Chairman, that concludes uh, the non-agenda public comments this morning. Okay, we'll move on to the approval of the statement of proceedings and the minutes for the regular meeting of September 30th and the Air Pollution Control uh, District meeting of September 30th, 2020. Is there so a motion for approval? So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Second. By Supervisor Jacobs, seconded by Supervisor Gaspar. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Chairman Cox. Aye. Supervisor Jacob. Aye. Supervisor Gaspar. Aye. Supervisor Fletcher. Sure, aye. Vice Chairman Desmond. Aye. Chairman Cox, that motion passes unanimously with all board members being present and voting aye. Okay, we'll now proceed on to the formation of the consent calendar. All three items on the consent calendar or on the calendar will be considered routine and will be enacted upon by one motion. Unless there's a desire on the part of the public or members of the board to pull items for further discussion, and that would also include the air pollution control, control district item. Mr. Clerk, are there any items that have been pulled by the public? Mr. Chairman, there are no items that have been pulled by the public. With that, uh, all items on the Board of Supervisors agenda, as well as the County of San Diego Air Pollution Control Board, may be placed in the consent calendar for your board's consideration. Very good. We'll go to the individual supervisors now, starting with Supervisor Jacob. Any Mr. items to pull? Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of that, this big consent agenda. Okay, we'll move on to Supervisor Gaspar. Chairman, I'll second the motion. Thank you. And uh, Supervisor Fletcher. Thank you, Chairman. I don't have any items to pull. I want to make brief comments on the APCD ozone plan. Uh, having this plan is vitally important uh, to meet our clean air objectives. Just last week was the third annual Clean Air Day, uh, a day to highlight and call for actions and challenging uh, the status quo as it relates to air quality. Uh, last week, we discussed at our board meeting, San Diego has the sixth worst air quality because of our ozone. Uh, our ozone will continue to be an, e an issue for this region. Uh, we know that it triggers asthma. We know that it triggers a variety uh, of health conditions. We also know that climate change is making it more difficult to meet our ozone targets, uh, which means reducing our emissions is an important part of strategy uh, to not only lower the toxic air pollution that are in the air, but help address climate change, which exacerbates uh, the presence of those toxic emissions uh, with the heat and the sunlight and our topography uh, to create the challenging situations we face here in San Diego. We do have to deal with this in a way that other regions that have different topography uh, or different climate or different days of sun uh, have to deal with their challenges, just like places in Florida and Louisiana have to deal with the realities of confronting things like hurricanes in a way that we do not. Uh, we can't ignore our weather, our climate, or just wish away 
uh, the problem and say there's nothing we can do. We have to confront it and we have to have forward progress and momentum uh, to do that. So I'm pleased to see us moving forward. With that said, a plan is just a plan. Uh, we need to move rapidly uh, in implementing these strategies and ensuring that we're holding ourselves accountable as the Air Pollution Control District uh, to see that the plan in place actually leads to uh, cleaner air. Uh, and that includes moving faster uh, in all of our efforts uh, around reducing uh, toxic emissions, uh, diesel heavy duty trucks, uh, our environmental justice community, 617 communities, and so many others. So I'm uh, pleased to see us moving forward and look forward to closely uh, being engaged with APCD uh, into the future to, uh, to ensure we can fulfill our commitment to these communities. Thank you, Supervisor Fletcher. We'll move on now to Vice Chairman Desmond. I have no items to pull and no comments. Thank you. Okay, I have uh, no additional comments on the items on the consent calendar. Uh, we do have a motion by Supervisor Jacob, seconded by Supervisor Gaspar to approve the three items we have on our uh, land use agenda and the one air pollution control, control district item. So if there's no further discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Chairman Cox. Aye. Supervisor Jacob. Aye. Supervisor Gaspar. Aye. Supervisor Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. Vice Chairman Desmond. Aye. Chairman Cox, that motion passes unanimously with all board members being present and voting aye. Before we adjourn, I understand the one caller we had for public communication is online now. So uh, Mr. Kirk, if you go ahead and bring them into the discussion. Mr. Chairman, that individual was on the line and then uh, looks like they left the call at this time. Okay. Well, that completes the items on our agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna move into closed session uh, to deal with those items that were continued from yesterday. Uh, the next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors will be at 9 a.m. on, on, on uh, Tuesday, October 27th. Uh, Mr. Kirk, is there anything else that we need to cover today before we adjourn into closed session? No, Mr. Chairman, thank you. If there are any reportable items out of closed session, those will be uh, uh, presented by the uh, County Council at the conclusion of the closed session. If there's no further business, we will stand adjourned to closed session.